yeah, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. So I have a question. Are we as artists biased? Are the brands that we see on a day-to-day -day basis by our peers and other artists actually as good as we think they are? Or are we just completely convinced that just because there is a name brand on an $8 marker, it's actually better? <gasps> it's not! Ooh, really? It's the lighter one. <sighs> Wow, I'm, I'm flawed. Today, we are gonna put that to the test. The rules are simple. I'm heading out to an art store and I'm gonna purchase a name brand product as well as a very similar generic store brand product that pretty much works the same, is the same color and is the same style of art supply. The only difference really being the name on the packaging. I'm gonna be putting many different art supplies to the test and once I get back, my boyfriend is going to wrap every single art supply to make it indistinguishable to me. Basically, we're gonna be trying art supplies without the bias to see which one is actually performing better. So let's get shopping. So what I would like to try is Posca pens, Copic markers, a watercolor and acrylic. I would also like to try some paper as well. So those are my five products I want to try and find that are similar. Also pencils, that's, that's something else I want to get. Okay, so for example, these are brush markers and pens. So these are very similar to Copic markers, except they're by Artist Loft. Art Artists Loft. These ones will be a really good one to compare to Copic markers but for comparison these are $4.99 and the Copics are $7.99 so there's a big price difference there. Also another comparison for $49 you can get a 12 pack, Copics for a 6 pack are $45 so they're almost the same price but you get double the markers. They also have some Artist Loft acrylic paint markers right here. These are $20 for a set of 8. Posca markers are $30 for a set of 8 so there's a $10 price difference there. I had a really good idea. I think I'm going to do a level 1 academic paintbrush compared to a level 3 professional paintbrush. So I've never tried the Artist Loft High Viscosity Acrylics before and these are actually on clearance. I'm not sure if they're changing the packaging up but I did find a High Viscosity Alizarin Crimson Permanent. So I'm gonna use this one. This is only $7. What's really strange is that the Alizarin Crimson was already $15.99 when it wasn't on clearance. So this was actually more expensive than the Liquitex was which was only $12.99. So I'm actually really surprised at that. I say that but I also really love Artist Loft. I've used many Artist Loft paintbrushes and different tools over the years. All of my murals were done with this paint. This will be a really fun comparison. I'm gonna compare the Liquitex Basics to the Artist Loft as well. Both are classed as level one academic and I'm not really sure if I'm gonna notice a big difference. Let's go with Ultramarine. Got all of the supplies I needed. I'm headed back to my studio now and I will see you there. Okay, so I wanna do a quick disclaimer. I am by no means in this video saying that more expensive art supplies are needed or necessary or technically better quality because sometimes you can get better quality for a lower price than you would a more expensive product. So yes, this is not me saying you need expensive art supplies because they're better. This is just me testing out to see, are they? Sometimes they may not be. Okay, so we're back and we have some very taped up art supplies. I have no idea which is which. I'm gonna try not to look at it too closely right now, but this is what we're looking at. We've got a Liquitex Basics acrylic and we have an Artist Loft acrylic, which both are technically student quality, so they should be similar in quality, but we'll see how they turn out. Thank you. Hey, I really don't know which paint is thicker from being honest with you, but this one is a lot sturdier. It's not moving, whereas this one sort of is. There's no way of really telling unless I just use it. So I'm gonna go ahead, take the paint brushes. These ones have been stained, so they are the same color now. Like he used some paper tissue in there, so it's gonna throw me off a little bit. The reason I picked blue was because I tend to find blue is not always the best color when it comes to acrylics. No matter how professional it is, it's never that opaque. So I thought this would be an interesting test. So there's that one. There's this one. Mm, this one feels creamier. The opaqueness is about the same though, so I'm not really getting much based on that. They look the same. I feel like this though, this is the one that might be the Liquitex paint, just because of consistency. Although with a second layer, that one works quite nicely. Is this the Liquitex? Yes, that was right! Okay, cool, okay. This one just was a tad bit thicker and it was a bit creamier on the paper versus the Artist Loft. Again, very similar, like you look at them, they're the same color, the opaqueness is basically the same, but this one was creamier and that's what led me to think that it was that one. Now though, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test the paint brushes. This is the one I thought was more expensive, but I'm gonna give this one a whirl. This one was supposed to be square. I don't know what about it makes me think that this one is the professional one, but it does, just based on how it's shaped. 
like, oh yeah, this is definitely the more expensive paintbrush, 100%. This one is more flexible, it's more bendable versus this one, which felt kind of, I don't know, it looks bendable on the camera, but it's hard to explain. It just felt more sticky and more hard. So I'm gonna say that this one is the more expensive one based on that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a look. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. this is the more expensive one. I was right. This is the Artist Loft Vienna, and this was the Simply Simmons, which was actually half the price. This was $10, this one was five. Very, very good. I really like the Artist Loft Vienna. But yeah, these ones, these are some of my favorite paintbrushes. I really like them a lot. Three in a row, I'm really happy. Let's try the other paintbrush. So one of these was in a set, one of these was just sold by itself. So again, I stained these. This one has like a fiber sticking out the top, which is too long, which by default you think, oh, maybe that's the, the cheaper one. However, I almost got the vibe this was the more expensive paintbrush. I'm gonna give them a whirl and I'll see which one I like the feel of better. Hmm, I don't like that one. Oh, I don't like this one also. <laughs> they both feel very dry. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but they feel very dry. I'll be honest, I think this is the more expensive brush. However, there is a strand sticking out that's, that's not cut very well. So it's not the highest of quality. I can literally see this little part sticking up, but I still feel like performance wise, they perform exactly the same. This one just feels like it's a little bit more dense. So I'm gonna say this one is the more expensive one. Oh, this is a Princeton one. Let's unravel this one. Yeah, I can literally tell by the, the, the bright gold that this was the cheaper one. I'm really not a fan of those kind of real brassy ferrules on brushes. Yeah, this is the, this is the cheap one. You can see by just the handle and everything. It's, it's not as good, but performance wise, I would not buy one over the other. Okay, going back to the mixed media pad now. I'm gonna compare some pencils. So I have red, green, and blue. I'm not gonna look too closely because I think that's gonna be a dead giveaway, so I'll do that last. I just wanna do this based on performance more than anything right now. This one feels very nice. It doesn't feel too scratchy on the paper. It feels kind of waxy, which leads me to believe it could be Prismacolor. This one, oh yeah, no, that's, that's, that's Prismacolor. This one is a lot more dry. So yeah, this one, this is the cheap one. This is Prismacolor. Let's try these ones. That's a cheap one. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. These are these are these are the Prismacolor ones. I can just tell. I want to know if there is a more fair comparison to Prismacolor because obviously lots of different pencils have different ways of how they work. Is that the right way to say it? Prismacolor tend to be more waxy, whereas there are other pencils that are expensive that aren't necessarily waxy. So yeah, these are classic. These are these are Prismacolor. They feel a million times better. So these are the two pencils that I was comparing. They're very similar in shape and size and just style overall, but I don't know. They're not as good. You can also notice how where they've been sharpened, the wood isn't as high quality, it's kind of chipped a little bit. It's just kind of broken up, whereas the Prismacolor has just stayed very intact. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about these ones, actually. So I have Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic, which is some of my favorite paint of all time, and Artist Loft High Viscosity professional paint. The Liquitex is actually cheaper, but this worked out cheaper, the Artist Loft, simply because it was on clearance. So generally speaking, this is actually cheaper than this, even though technically this should be higher quality based on all of their other art supplies. Ketchup, ooh, okay. I wish I, like, one is slightly darker than the other. Let's do the shake test. That test did not determine one little bit. Okay, this is nice. This is very nice paint. Not overly opaque though. Let's see this one. Oh, this one's way creamier. Is this is Liquitex. Opacity's a little better on this one, but still not amazing. But this does feel a lot creamier. This one has me stumped because if you're someone that likes creamy paint, this one is better, but this one is still very good paint. I'm gonna say this one's the Liquitex. <gasps> it's not, really? It's the lighter one. <sighs> wow, I'm, I'm flawed. I, this one is way creamier. That's why I was like, is it creamy normally? This one works really nicely. I actually prefer the feel of it. I nearly got a perfect score, but I didn't this time. I actually prefer the artist loft. I'm, I'm amazed, I'm stumped. That's, wow, cool, okay. I have Copics. I also have some Posca markers. So obviously there's a big difference in these because one is shaped this, 
They're obviously shaped differently, so what I'm gonna have him do is take the lids off for me and then just wrap it all the way to the nib. That way it's gonna make it kind of nearly impossible for me to figure out. Here are our two markers. They're literally indistinguishable. They look exactly the same. But why are they different colors? Is that how they look with the cap? They look like different colors with the caps off. What the heck? I'm so confused. Okay, let's try this one. Mmm. Okay. I don't love this one. It's like pink. And then this one. Mmm. I'm gonna be honest, both are kind of crap. <laughs> Notice how the caps are the same color, but on the paper, they're two completely different colors. This one feels more like a Copic marker. This one's a little more stiff. I don't know. I think this pink one is the Copic, but why is it so different to the lid? That's my question. Because this is way more accurate to the lid than the, the pink one is. I think the pink is way more pigmented as well. Like if you look at the color, the way that it's blended, it's blended a lot better on the actual paper than the purple did. This is quite, I don't know, strokey. Whereas this one, it just sort of blends better. So I'm gonna say the pink one is the Copic I'm gonna say, this is more flexible than this one. I was wrong, this is the Artist Loft one. This feels more like a Copic to me than the Copic does. That's so bizarre. Maybe it's because the color is so different. Let me see. Yeah, that's so, I'm actually surprised. Here's a pink Copic next to the Artist Loft one. And again, it's, it's almost like this one blends better than the actual Copic does. That's so strange. I started off strong and I've ended badly, but that's okay because you know what? It's nice to see that sometimes art supplies aren't better just because they're name brand. Okay, so last but not least, we're gonna be trying out the Posca markers. This one I'm very excited for because to me, based on every single paint marker I've used, Posca blows all of them out of the water. It's just so much better in every way. But I wanna check and see if that's actually the case or if I'm just Posca biased. <laughs> okay, here we go. Posca markers. Okay, so we have this one. Let's do, let's do like a heart. This is working very nicely. It works really well. Let me see if I can paint on something random. Okay, let's test this out on a mug. I mean, wow, that is amazing. That is a really good paint pen. I'm actually very, that is the worst heart I think I've ever drawn in my life, but you get the gist of it. Like this is an amazing paint pen. I have no critique of that at all. Other than the nib looks cheap. This one I'm gonna guess is a Posca marker just because the, the nib looks a little better and it feels a little smoother to get the paint out, which again leads me to believe this is the Posca. I mean, again, amazing quality, very similar. Like I really can't distinguish quality wise either of these markers, but just for research purposes, I'm gonna draw on here too. And this one's actually not going on as well as the other pen, that's weird. Yeah, this one strangely is not adhering to the ceramic white as well. Like it kind of suctioned in a little bit when I was painting on it, but it still works. I'm pretty sure this is the Posca pen just based on the nib. This one doesn't sound like a Posca. This one does. I smell like, he's making me question myself. No, I'm not gonna, no, this one is, this is the Posca, I'm sure of it. Yay, it was the Posca. I don't know what to say. Like it was pretty apparent based on the quality of the nib, but the actual way that it painted on wasn't dry. It worked really well. And so yeah, these are the two pens right here. They worked really well, both equally decent. And technically this is a level one academic level too. So if anything has been taken from this video, I could not distinguish quality of the Artist Loft acrylic paint marker to the Posca. Over a long project, maybe this one would run out first. I don't know about that. But on first attempt, they worked exactly the same. I think what surprised me the most was the Copic versus the Artist Loft alcohol-based marker. That in particular, really, really blew me away. And I'm, I was very, very surprised. And then the Artist Loft paint. Actually, this one probably threw me the most. Okay, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If there is something you would like to see me try comparing in another video, if you'd like to see a second part to this, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And for now, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video.